Today on Discover Wisconsin, we're exploring the main street communities of Osceola, Florence, Whitewater, and Amro. Hello and welcome to Discover Wisconsin. This is an anthem For those who look for more And never say they've seen it all Windows down Let's take a ride The good land's great Tonight A community's main street is the beating heart of its town. It's the city center, it's full of history, and it's a gathering spot for residents and visitors alike. Today we're exploring four Wisconsin communities and the adventures to be had just off Main Street. About 30 miles north of Hudson and less than an hour away from the Twin Cities is our first stop, the oh-so-charming village of Osceola. It's surrounded by natural beauty, and adorable shops and eateries line its historic main street. Now, Osceola is a really cool little river town, and the fact that it lies right here on the St. Croix River is a big part of the Osceola scene in general. In fact, you can actually kayak the St. Croix National Scenic Riverway. Here we go. Riverwood Canoe offers a seven mile trip on the St. Croix River every day at four start times. We leave from our location here in downtown Osceola, bring people up to Interstate Park, and then they paddle the seven miles back downstream to Osceola Landing. It's really great for just about everybody. You see amazing cliffs, sandbars will emerge and people stop and have picnics. Wildlife is great. We give Osceola a way to connect people right to and from the river. So if my kayaking adventure down the St. Croix was very laid back and tranquil, well, my time at Trollhagen was the complete opposite. Trollhagen is a spot that's actually open year round. During the winter months, it's a popular ski hill. From roughly April to October, it opens up in a completely different way. We have a 125 element aerial challenge course, and we have a six line zip tour. And so you offer quite a few different levels for folks to consider? Well, behind us we have our kids course that is good for kids ages three to seven. And then for ages seven to 700, we have this big course right here. And you think just about anyone can do this? I think we're about to find out. <laughs> That's the truth for sure. <laughs> When I got to the top platform, I was thinking to myself, why did I do this? But by the time I was zip lining at the very end, I was like, yes. You just feel so good about yourself. And it just feels like you kind of conquered the world in an obstacle course. I would definitely do this again. It was probably one of the best experiences I've ever had in my life. Well, Osceola is a great place to, to hike year-round. You'll get the best views and the most iconic scenery in the whole St. Croix River Valley. There's uh, rock outcroppings, a beautiful forest that you can see here too, and uh, of course the, the Cascade Falls and the Osceola Creek which flows through to the St. Croix River. In the summer it's a wonderful place for families to gather to cool off where they can run in through the uh, falling water and kids can play in there. It's, it's really fantastic. Another fun way to take in the area scenery is on the Osceola and St. Croix Valley Railway. The vintage locomotive departs from Osceola and winds its way along sandstone bluffs and colorful forests May through October. I absolutely love the outdoors, and for that, Osceola is a great place. I mean, there's trails everywhere. There's great features that you don't see in other places. There's always something going on, and, and you wouldn't think that about a small town, but there's always something to be doing there. 
to find out more about everything there is to do in Osceola, head to discoverwisconsin.com. And don't go away. Up next, Marie heads north to explore the waterfalls and wilderness of Florence County. Welcome back to Discover Wisconsin, just off Main Street. Deep into the North Woods, where Wisconsin's border meets Michigan's Upper Peninsula, is Florence County. Florence County is absolutely stunning. It's beautiful, wild, undisturbed nature at its finest. And as the residents here will tell you, there is not a single stoplight in the entire county. Between the lakes, rivers, forests, and miles of trails, there are recreational opportunities all year long. If you, if you don't have something to do in the winter, it's a long year. <laughs> We've got about 150 miles of trail. And we, we connect with all the other counties, and we connect with Michigan. We can go just about anywhere. We take pride in our trails and how we take care of them. They always say we're smoother than the roads in Florence County. Florence County is also home to Kai's Peak Recreation Area. And every year they have an event called Winterfest, which offers families a full day of skiing, snowboarding, tubing, and tons of other fun winter activities. Winterfest is definitely geared towards families. It's a real low-cost way to give your kids a chance to try skiing, try snowboarding, get out in tube. We've got different types of slopes. There's the beginner slope to learn on. We've got intermediate slopes, and we've got double diamonds. We've got some extra kids' activities down at the bottom of the hill, some little competitions with snowball launchers and human bowling. And we actually have the disc golf folks here today to give you tips on how to disc golf. About 50% of the land in Florence County is publicly owned, and it's home to nearly 200 miles of UTV and ATV trails. I have no UTV experience, um, but it was so cool to be right out there on the trail, um, actually really relaxing and tranquil, which is the opposite of what you would think it would be. It's a ATV, UTV paradise, what it amounts to. It's just a wonderful place to be. It is, it really is. And um, we had some fun out on the trails. Yes, yes. <laughs> so what is your favorite part about riding, riding the trails? It's just the openness and the freedom you get. Absolutely, you're getting nature, you're getting great scenery and, and fresh air. Yes, oh, definitely. When it comes to Florence County's trails, those on the water are equally as spectacular, giving a glimpse into Wisconsin's more remote and rugged river systems. The Pine and Papa River are the state's original wild rivers. What does that mean to be a wild river? Can you explain that a little bit? Well, it means that it's untouched, it's, it's undeveloped. Uh, you can experience the wildness of the river mm -hmm. that, that it had in the past and has brought forward and it exists now. There's no other protection quite like it in the state or in the nation. We did some canoeing around the Pine River Oxbow, which is really neat because the Oxbow means that the river circles around and meets itself again. So it's the perfect uh, relaxing canoeing experience. The current just kind of takes you. You could do a little paddling or you can just take in the scenery around you. Eventually, the rivers cascade, tumble, and roar down seven breathtaking waterfalls all of which are accessible by land. There are amazing places where the water flows over the rock. It's what draws us to rivers. When we get there and we, we're excited and we're a little afraid of them. Amazing. And they stimulate so much sort of those intrinsic values of wildness that these rivers have. Between the rapids and the untouched wilderness, I've never seen anything or experienced anything like this in Wisconsin. It feels like you're a world away, but it's actually right in your backyard. Head to discoverwisconsin.com to download free itineraries for the four communities featured in this episode. When we come back, I'm visiting a college town with access to a gorgeous stretch of the Ice Age Trail. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Discover Wisconsin, where we're exploring four Wisconsin Main Street communities. Just miles away from the Kettle Moraine State Forest in southeast Wisconsin, set in a landscape rich with lakes, hills, and prairies, is the city of Whitewater. I would say it's the biggest little city in Wisconsin. 
We have the University of Wisconsin Whitewater here, which creates an, an urban scene, an urban feel. But in addition to that, we've got a lot of real family-friendly, family-oriented activities all year long. Every Tuesday during warm months of the year and every Saturday during cold months, the Whitewater City Market convenes. It's a great opportunity to get the community together, to get an idea of what and who Whitewater is like. You can hear live music from a band that's playing in the background. We have a lot of delicious food and produce and knickknacks that people can come and enjoy. Whitewater is well known for the university out here, but it's also a lively community that values the land and wildlife around them. Perhaps it's because it's an official Ice Age Trail community, and it's home to a significant and beautiful portion of the trail that runs through the Kettle Moraine State Forest. The trail is about a thousand miles long and meanders through the state of Wisconsin. Whitewater is close to about 26 miles of trail, which is covered through Jefferson and Walworth counties. So as a community, we look to be sustainable in our activities, but also encourage others to come and enjoy it. I got to go on a beautiful hike with the Ice Age Trail Alliance. Ruth McCann was a wealth of knowledge. She took us on a beautiful portion of the trail. Ruth, what do you love so much about the Ice Age Trail that runs near Whitewater here? Hiking it. <laughs> I hike every day, you know, and this is an opportunity that you have right outside your back door. It's accessible, and as you mentioned, it's the best way to see the state is to walk it. It is the best way to see the state of Wisconsin, and it's gorgeous. Yeah. You can't see it by bike. You can't see it by air. You can't see it by car. You have to walk it. You get to see features that you don't have, you'll never be exposed to sure. doing it any other way. Mm -hmm. Hiking the Ice Age Trail was amazing, but there was another side of Whitewater that I had heard a lot about and was eager to experience for myself. Southeastern Wisconsin has incredible biking, which is why we put our bike shop here. We looked at the whole country as to where to put our shop, and the um, riding here is so good for so many people that we wanted to help develop cycling in this part of the country. <laughs> I have actually never been road biking, so I'm so much looking forward to finding out more about it, what it's like. I hear the bikes are very light, so you can go very fast. Um, it should be exciting, but I'm, I'm looking forward to getting out there on the road and experiencing it. There's so many country roads that are paved and they were originally paved for the farmers to bring the milk to the places they need to bring it to. So those became very beautiful places to ride your bicycle. Today we're gonna to be riding on a designated road biking trail. It's out on the scenic farmlands and you can see the Kettle Moraine Ridge out there and also we'll be riding to an artesian well. The Midwest is unique in all the world, I think, for friendly folks, but Whitewater has a corner market on that population. I think maybe it originated here. So we have just wonderful people that are willing to help you in any way. They'll come out of their way to be kind and neighborly. Regardless of your background, what your own personal preferences and lifestyle is, there's a place for you in Whitewater, and everybody feels it. So I think that's probably the best thing about the community. Check out behind-the-scenes photos of our crew filming this episode at discoverwisconsin.com. When we come back, Mariah is off to Amro. Stick around. We're back exploring the fun to be had just off Main Street. Just minutes from Oshkosh, on the banks of the Fox River, is the city of Amro. Amro is a quintessential Wisconsin Main Street community with a rich history, small town pride, and lots of opportunities to get out and explore. I recommend starting your visit with the Amro Historical Walking Tour. So would you say if someone's gonna come to Amro, you can't leave without learning at least a little bit about its history here? It's almost impossible not to learn a, a little bit about the history. First of all, the architecture of the buildings on Main Street but uh, years ago, some uh, people with a lot of foresight put together the historical walking trail, which is a, a self-guided trail. Um, you can walk it, you can bike it, uh, parts you can drive it, and every building of significance has a plaque. 
This is the bell tower, okay. the famous bell tower, whose uh, picture in Life magazine showed the arm of Ken Katie reaching out and adjusting the arms of the clock. And I kind of want to recreate it, so oh, <laughs> let's all see right. if we can find the clock. All right, well, you got to have those arms like Ken. Oh, I brought I'll... my biceps. Okay. <laughs> I climbed up to the bell tower and recreated a famous photo, which was super fun to do. I think that's one of the best ways to take in a town that you're a little unfamiliar with, is first learn about that city's history. Amro is located in the heart of the Fox River Valley, and the river is a huge part of the city's lifestyle, especially when it comes to recreation and celebration. And one of the many amenities offered by the city is free kayak and canoe rentals available at Stearns Park. We have a cabin on the river, and we decided to take up kayaking. Paige was probably about 13 years old, so kids were old enough, so we started doing it as a family. You don't have to be athletic to do it or strong. You can just float or you can give yourself an exercise. It's something fun and active that we do um, together, and that's kind of hard to find, especially when you have teenage kids or older kids. So it's just a free, fun way to spend the day. We're here in Scott Park. It's the gem of our city, and it really is the hub of all of our events. Amro's 4th of July celebration is truly one of a kind. We get eight to 10,000 people coming to our small town of only 3,500 annually. There's kids activities, there's the community band that plays in the afternoon, then a duck race. The duck race is 2,000 ducks going down our lagoon, which is pretty exciting. It really tops off the evening then being able to watch fireworks. Our Amro Thursday Night Market, located again in Scott Park, has a monthly Music at the Market event where musicians come and you can find fresh veggies every week, um, a number of different crafts and arts. It's a great time and people really do love and come back week after week for that event. Amro is a small town, but I'm amazed at all the things there are to do. The fact that a place like Terrell's Island exists just outside of town it's a pretty amazing thing. I don't know that I've seen scenery quite like this in all of the places I've visited in Wisconsin. So you've got trees on one side and then you have Lake Butamore on the other. And then at one point, the whole trail sort of opens up and you've got the lake on both sides. It couldn't have been, I don't think, any prettier. The main drag is boring. You, you see billboards and vehicles. You don't see people. And when you go into a small community, you see people, you experience people, and you get to slow down and take something in that you wouldn't typically take in. Whether it is a Main Street community or even uh, the ethnic communities and cities, you get something so unique and different when you're in a place that is a community. Make friends, meet people, and enjoy life. Breathe. Stream Discover Wisconsin anywhere, anytime. Continue the adventure on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, Roku, Chromecast, Smart TV, and discoverwisconsin.com.